All right, I wanted to check out this short clip from Eric Klopper's play. It is some of the more extreme and lesser known bits about circumcision. Uh, how some of the more modern forms of circumcision are actually not as old as many might think. And how some of the more extreme forms and rituals involved in circumcision have more extreme consequences. Yeah, we're, we're going there. <laughs> now, Leonard Glick does a great job of summarizing circumcision in ancient Judea in his book. He says, in summary, the father offers his son's foreskin as a bloody sacrifice for what may have been a substitute for child sacrifice. <laughs> um, he acknowledges for what may have been a, he declares acknowledgement of paternity, readiness to submit the child to a perilous procedure, a vowel of sexual restraint of his own and his son in the future, and um, intention to raise him as a conforming member of the male-centered collective, and in summary, offers his submission to the elder's will. Whoa. Do you understand what this means? See, contrary to the popular narrative, circumcision was designed to mark us like cattle. Circumcision was designed to emasculate us like slaves. Circumcision was designed to damage us like we're not even human. That is what circumcision was designed to do. So that is a lot to take in, but essentially, as the summary says, it is a way to partially perform a human sacrifice without a full human sacrifice. And all this talk about circumcision is not even the circumcision you'd recognize today. See, Judaism underwent an overhaul around 200 AD during a diasporic period. It was called the Rabbinic Period, as rabbis redid everything to accommodate the needs of a more dispersed population. Now, when rabbis were redoing everything, they redid, you guessed it, the covenant of circumcision as well. See, around 200 AD, Jews didn't want to be circumcised back then either. So, what they would do is they would take their remnant foreskin and stretch it over the head of their penis, and over a period of time, they would look uncircumcised like a Gentile. Now, this allowed Jews of ancient Greece to better fit in with their Gentile peers, as many social events were done in the nude, whether they be public spas or athletic events or whatnot. Now, undoing the Holy Covenant was anathema to rabbinic authority. So rabbis took revenge. Rabbis took revenge. And to take their revenge, they radicalized the circumcision ritual from just cutting off the overhanging tip of the foreskin to ablation of the entire tissue. So... So, that is where the misconception comes that uh, circumcision is just a snip and that it is just a small flap of skin. That may have been more accurate for more ancient forms of circumcision, but like he, er, like Eric Klopper is explaining now, more modern forms of circumcision are complete amputation of the tissue. The new circumcision ritual, the one that stands to this day, goes like this. And it's called the bris malah, which means the covenant of cutting. Sounds like a lovely thing to take your child to. Now, the first stage, which used to be the only stage, is called the milah, which means cutting. And here, the ritual... We're going to have to censor some of this will amputate the part of the foreskin that extends over the glands. If we take a look at this picture, that first dotted line is the original Mila cut. And if we take a look at this picture, here's a moil cutting into the flesh of a newborn's genitals. So I'll leave a now link the stage, to the description which was enacted as an act to the original video revenge, that I found on YouTube. Pariah, which means but, uh, and here, the yeah, I'll take care of all this. Sharpen his fingernails and shred the infant's genital mucosa. If one shred of genital mucosa remained, it was deemed religiously invalid. And if we take a look at this picture, here we can see the modern-day pariah cut, where the American medical circumcision is modeled after. As we can see, it's about an amputation of a half to a third of the external genitalia. And here we can see a moil using his sharpened fingernails to shred this infant's genital mucosa. Now, this baby doesn't look like he's having a very good time, but I could be wrong. Now the third stage, <laughs> the third stage, and I'm not making this up, you can read it in the ancient rabbinic text, the Mishnah, which is still followed to this day, 
is called mitzitza, which means sucking. And here, the ritual circumciser, after he shreds the infant's genitals with his fingernails, will take the baby's red, raw, and bleeding penis and put it in his mouth and suck on it. Now, this is a modern-day picture of a moil performing mitzitza on this baby. He looks like he's having a great time. I'm not so sure about the infant, but again, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Now, if these seem like extreme acts of sexual violence to you, that is because they are, and they have real consequences. Here we have a baby who has contracted herpes after a moil has performed mitzitza on him. Now, this baby is effectively brain dead for the rest of his life because this moil was satisfying an ancient act of rabbinic revenge. So this is some of the... Uh... I'm going to stop it at that point. This is some of the more censored bits of circumcision that is not talked about. Um, it's where a lot of the modern misconceptions come from, and it's a lot of the far more extreme damaging parts that are just completely censored from society. Most today would have no idea that an infant contracted herpes through the mouth of somebody else because they got circumcised. That just seems absolutely absurd. But when you put it all out there in front of you, it starts to show just how absurd circumcision really is. So seeing how Brismala is only 200 AD years old and uh, the extreme, measure, me, the extreme measures of Metzitza. Um, I'd like to know what everybody thinks about these in the comments. 